ultralight winter camping. If I can do it, you can do it too. Which stove to choose and how to use it. In the winter time, often liquid water is not available and you need to melt snow. That means that going stoveless is more or less out. You will need a stove that has a lot of capacity, is very dependable and will work in low temperatures. The fuel tap stove and the alcohol stove, they will work in low temperatures, but they just don't pack the capacity that you need. The accepted way to go is a multi-fuel stove. That they are heavy, they are expensive and they do take a little maintenance. Wood is an option, especially if you base camp. So how do any of you guys do that when the wood is covered in six feet of snow and anything that you will burn is going to melt the snow around it and make it sink down into the snow? I couldn't really fix that problem. So what I did is I have used gas canisters on my last two serious winter trips. In the first year I used a remote canister stove. The good thing about this is that it will burn in any temperature because you can turn the canister upside down. The stove will preheat your gas through this tube and you will be able to burn liquid gas. And it has only one setting and that is Inferno. It burns like crazy. So I felt that a lot of heat was lost around the sides of my pot, that it lacked some fuel efficiency. A few years ago, upright canister stoves for winter use were very much frowned upon. The colder it is, the harder it is for the gas that is in the canister to evaporate. The evaporation process in the canister cools the canister down even more than it already is. An upright canister stove could work in winter, but you need to do some tricks. The first trick is, you keep the canister warm in your sleeping bag or your coat, and you take it out the last minute right before you light the stove. So you start off with a warm canister. Second trick is, you always put it on top of something that insulates. Also what you should do, is have a second canister handy. If the first one cools down too much while cooking, you can take the second one, use the heat it makes to warm the first one up again. Do take care that you don't let them explode. Now it is best if you have something with you that will allow you to put the canister in liquid water. Now these tricks sort of address the problem. But it was still considered a gamble to go with an upright gas stove in colder temperatures. However, as technology has moved forward, we now have the Coleman minus 27 extreme gas and the Primus winter gas. Both of them really work without any tricks or frills, down to about minus 10 degrees. And if you combine all the tricks I just mentioned, with these newer gas canisters for cold temps, then I believe you're safe enough. I figured I needed to melt a lot of snow the second year. This turned out to be the case actually, and I went for fuel efficiency. So I went with the upright canister stove, which had the added benefits that it is a lot lighter than my remote canister stove. The stove that I took is the, by many people, much beloved BRS Ultralight stove. It's extremely lightweight. It's very, very cheap. And what it does is the flame is pointed more or less straight upwards, which is good because you don't lose heat over the sides of your pot.
Blue skies are back. The sun is coming up. The coffee is brewing. And this turned out um, tremendously well. I melted snow for about five of the seven days. And um, so that's about five liter per day. So I melted more than 25 liters of water. I heated uh, on top of that some extra water for coffee, hot meals in the evening and hot breakfast. And I did all that with only one canister. So I, had, uh, I took two, of course, to be safe. Um, and I had one full canister left at the end of the week. And this is in the middle of Scandinavian winter. Now I have to say I do use some tricks to save fuel. One of them is I don't boil all my water. For instance, for coffee, your water doesn't need to be any warmer than 70 degrees Celsius. For your hot evening meal where you dehydrate full food, 90 degrees Celsius is um, warm enough. Um, for a hot breakfast, even colder is still good. Also, I keep water in my sleeping bag at night inside the platypus. So when I wake up in the morning, instead of it being zero or less degrees, it is close to 37 degrees Celsius, which is a lot quicker to heat up for the coffee in the morning. absolutely thrilled with the efficiency of this stove setup and it also felt safe because the stove performed tremendously well with the Coleman minus 27 extreme fuel. So for ultralight winter camping um, I had a very good experience using canister stoves, uh, one time remote, one time upright stove, both worked very well and I recommend. There are many videos by very good outdoorsmen that cover uh, melting snow and that cover stoves in winter, um, especially multi-fuel stoves or wood. Um, do watch those to get some extra idea under your belt of how you will do in reality if you also choose to go on an ultralight winter camping trip. Thanks, see ya, Papa Hiker.